call it a treadmill for fish. For the past four years, scientists at this marine lab in West Vancouver have studied the health of both wild and farmed salmon. They want to know how sea lice affect fish. We can actually test how fit this fish is. So pretty much the same as you would with a human athlete, we can start looking at um, what sort of impact sea lice is going to have on the fitness of this fish. We can do either tests that look at uh, his stamina and his performance, or tests that show what his maximum swimming speed is. Dr. Kevin Butterworth and his team at the University of British Columbia Center for Aquaculture and the Environment have recreated a natural marine environment here. They regulate water current speed, salinity, and overall stress on fish. Over here we have a healthy coho smolt. Once we find out how well he performs inside the tube, we can put in a fish that's infected with sea lice, and then we can find out how well he performs and look at the difference between the two. Those opposed to fish farming argue that farmed salmon are infecting wild salmon with sea lice and killing them. Scientists here say there is no data to support that argument yet. Over here on the west coast, we don't have any direct link and we don't know whether we have a problem yet. So a lot of the work that's ongoing is to um, try and show um, if we do have a problem, because to date we just don't know. Dr. Butterworth knows sea lice can infect both wild and farm salmon, but what he doesn't know is how serious the threat is. If we find that there isn't sufficient numbers of sea lice moving from farm fish to wild fish to actually make an impact on the numbers of sea lice on wild fish, then it's not, it's not impact in the wild populations at all. That makes then sea lice management on the farms a, a priority for farmers, but not a, a wider environmental issue. Sea lice occur naturally in all of the world's oceans. In this little vial, we have a Lepiopteris salmonis, which is a salmon louse. You can see there it's got a little paper tag in there, and the tag is a number for a fish. So this particular fish only had one louse on it. You can see the little egg strings at the back of the, the louse. So that means that this is a gravid female. So she was about to release her eggs. And this is on Wild Chinook that we're heading out to sea on the west coast of Vancouver Island. In sufficient numbers, sea lice do pose a real danger to fish populations, both wild and farmed. Basically they hitch a ride on the fish and then they sit there and they scrape off the mucus layers and they feed on the mucus layers. Um, in some of the fish they seem to scrape through the mucus layers and scrape actually into the top of the scales or under the scales into the skin. Lice don't like cold water or seas with low salinity. He says British Columbia's west coast is saturated with rain so that raises water temperature and dilutes salinity. Still, scientists want to know when sea lice actually begin to threaten fish health. The uh, ethos behind the experiments that we are doing is to actually see how many sea lice are detrimental to the health of the fish, not how many sea lice kill them. Because it's the, the killing point is, is very final, whereas if you have a fish in the wild, you don't want to know how many fish are actually dropping dead from sea lice. You want to know at what point do the sea lice loads actually start affecting the health of the fish. People opposed to fish farms say evidence already proves sea lice are killing huge stocks of wild salmon in other parts of the world. They say scientific data shows that our oceans and seas are at risk. Not so, says Dr. Butterworth. There's two main research questions. The first is, is um, the sea lice on the farms actually transferring to this wild uh, salmon in sufficient numbers to have an effect on them? And the second question is how many sea lice are actually detrimental to their health? Because if you catch salmon and you see sea lice on them and you're not used to seeing the sea lice on them, you may think that there's a, a large problem. But we don't actually know how many sea lice are innocuous to salmon and how many are actually detrimental to their health. Over here on the west coast, there's um, relatively few farmed fish compared to the wild fish numbers. And we know that the wild fish here have a lot of sea lice on them. So 
we don't actually know whether the sea lice on the farm fish are making an impact on the sea lice on the wild fish at all. From tiny fry, fish here are monitored throughout their life so that the science is exact. Researchers control every aspect of the fish so that their data is precise. We know where they've come from, we feed them, everything that we can control, we control. So we know that we get an experiment with very tightly defined parameters. Marine biologists say this is cutting edge research. They anticipate their study will provide definite answers by the end of the year. Dr. Butterworth and his team hope to know first if salmon farms are infecting wild fish and second how many sea lice it takes to affect the health of salmon. In the meantime, these little guys will continue to be put to the test in the best interests of science.